put in, you know, the Old Testament, New Testament stuff back there is pretty good. Well, and I happen to agree that a good life starts with a good breakfast. Hey, you know, you have to have it. Well, I usually eat my breakfast around noon, so <laughs> that's the way it goes. It, it, such as the me, commissioners. Excuse me, commissioners. We are now recording. Do we have a quorum? Mark, we are we have short. Eight? I think we we're are short. short one. I'm letting Meg Salyer, um, I'm sending her Zoom invite again, so hopefully she'll be on shortly. So we should probably wait until we have a quorum to start. Correct. Yeah. So the meeting hasn't started, so we shouldn't have to record what? yet. Right. Because there's not a meeting. Hey, Brian, on my Apple Watch is say 359. But our what? legal our legal advisor says that we can't even have a meeting start until we have a quorum. So we're not really meeting right now. We're just chatting. Correct. There's no <laughs> meeting yet because we don't have a quorum. We're just gathered people. Okay. Small. Make it. I do not see Meg Salyer yet. I just got on, Robbie. Yay! Yeah. And you, so we can hear you. Perfect. Yep, thanks so much. I couldn't yes. get it from the agenda thing. Yeah, a couple people had that same thing. So, perfect. Well, Mark, you ready? ready. I think now you can make your announcement, Mark. Okay. And for clarification, Robbie, his announcement was, is that we now have a quorum and that are we going to do a, a, a you're going to go ahead and tell the chair we're recording, correct? That is correct. We are now recording. Perfect. Thank you. The time is now one after four o'clock. Welcome everyone. We now have a quorum and we will begin the Oklahoma City Arts Commission's August 17th meeting. As you are aware, this meeting is live streamed from remote locations. We want to remind everyone that as you have arrived in our virtual meeting, we have muted your mic. As instructed in the agenda, those who called or emailed us in advance to let us know your name, contact number, and agenda item you wish to speak about will be recognized first. Your text, email, or call will not be received once the meeting has begun. Before the Arts Commissioners vote on each item, I will ask if any members of the public wish to speak. Since you are muted, when I call on you, please unmute yourself. On a phone, you'll use star six, and then please state your name and address for the record before you speak. On a desktop or laptop, you'll hover your cursor over the microphone icon to remove the diagonal red line. If we lose our connection for this meeting, for more than 15 minutes, we will resume at our next regularly scheduled Arts Commission meeting on September 21st at 4 p.m. We will now conduct the roll call. So Mark, will you please call roll? Yes, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Chambers. Here. Commissioner Bailey. Here. Commissioner Yosef. Commissioner Booker. Commissioner Cooper. Commissioner Eichmann. Here. Commissioner Hassenbeck. Com Commissioner Hassenbeck. Commissioner Hill. Here. Commissioner Kobas. Here. Commissioner Loftus. Here. Commissioner Owens. Commissioner Salyer. Here. Commissioner Seward. Here. Commissioner Sweeney. Commissioner Williams. Mr. Chair, that completes our roll call. We have a quorum. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item two, approval of the meeting minutes from the July 20th meeting. After everyone 
everyone having a chance to review the minutes. And if there are no further edits, I'll entertain a motion in a second. I would make a motion to approve the minutes as submitted. Second. I believe I have a motion from Commissioner Salyer and a second from Commissioner Eichmann. Is that correct? Correct. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, rather, correct me if I'm wrong, um, we, we need to do roll call vote, correct, for every motion? That's okay. correct. Mark, will you please conduct the vote? Commissioner Loftus? Yes. Commissioner Hill? Yes. Commissioner Bailey? Yes. Commissioner Chambers? Yes. Commissioner Hassenbeck? Commissioner Seward? Yes. Commissioner Kovash? Yes. Commissioner Eichmann? Yes. Commissioner Salyer? Yes. So our motion has passed. Is that correct, Mark? Yes, the motion has passed. And um, just for clarification, that second was recorded by Elizabeth Eichmann, Commissioner Eichmann, and not John Seward. But more importantly, the motion correct. passes. Moving on to agenda item 3A, case number 200, uh, rather items for discussion action, um, letter A, case number 200028, Behold the Good, mural by Ebony Iman Dallas, 7710 Northwest 10th Street, for reaching our city, Ward 1. Robbie, will you please introduce this item? Yes, this is a, a project that was a technical assistance project through the planning department's revitalization efforts. And uh, Arodi Sanchez and Jason Rowinski were working with uh, senior planner Susan Atkinson um, and looking at the 10th Street corridor. And they needed help finding an artist for what they wanted to do. And Ebony Amon Dallas uh, was one of the artists recommended to them and they reached out and were able to successfully make an application for this project. The walls will, the mural will be on the walls facing north and west. And you can see here the location of the building. And the walls are indicated in red. And here are the elevation views. So the mural will wrap around. And here is the mural design and the measurements. So this building was constructed in 1963 as an over 26,000 square foot warehouse. And the property was sold to reaching our city and rezoned to a PUD to allow for a lot of new uses. They have a daycare, a gym, sanctuary, thrift store, and a warehouse where they collect, store, and distribute commodities. And so on this corridor, there's a mix of commercial and industrial and a lot of residential use as well. And the use here is to beautify and show images of daily life in the area and on the property meant to unite, transform, and inspire the community. So the permitting requirements for this particular site under the PUD, it will be the review by the Arts Commission. And if recommended, they will seek a permit for a mural. And all information was received by the from the applicant. I understand the artist Ebony is here with us. Um, is there anything that you would like to share with the commission, Ebony? And just... I apologize, Ebony, you're muted. That's okay. <laughs> there we go, yeah. Okay. Yes. Hello again. <laughs> um, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I just want to let you know, all know I'm just super excited to be here. Glad to be a part of the ROC team. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with Jason and Rodi, which are also on this call. 
um, and Robbie and, um, and Susan as well. So um, we're just, you know, I'm excited to hopefully get started soon. <laughs> Thank you, Ebony. Um, again, the organizers are Rodi and Jason are both with us. Is there something you'd like to add to the application or share with the commission? You know, last year we, we had talked with Susan and she knows that we're, you know, we believe in the power of art to change community. And this is not only just a mural that goes on a building, but something that invites people in. And we're working with local artists that we had at our gala last year. Uh, to create more programs and opportunities for our um, underprivileged neighborhood. So for us, not only I think will this add to the beauty of the neighborhood, it will provide a gateway into uh, life uh, and life-giving activity for the neighborhood. And so um, we, we see it as uh, the first of, uh, of a lot of big steps and I'm uh, just excited about all that. So thanks for uh, even hearing us out. Thank you, Jason. Or Rody, is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, I think Jason said it well. Uh, we're just very excited to uh, have this mural on our property uh, to create an environment of invitation where everybody's welcome and have a seat at the table. It will represent who we are well, and we hope uh, uh, to continue to live out and sort of uh, take upon flesh the spirit of this art that uh, we are uh, excited to uh, place on our building. Thank you. And finally, Susan Atkinson. Uh, thank you, uh, Commissioner Chambers. I really can't say much better than what Arodi and Jason and Ebony have said. Um, this is a really exciting um, collaboration between the uh, all of the forces for good at, at Rock reaching our city, and then also their collaborators with the West 10 uh, Business District. They are uh, eager to help promote um, the mural as a, a, a living testament to, to progress in the, in the commercial district. Um, and I just keep pinching myself that I get to do such fun projects every day as work on these kinds of things with, with businesses and, and faith-based organizations in our commercial districts. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Commissioners, any questions for the artist, the app, um, the organizers, um, or city staff? Um, Commissioner Chambers, I just have uh, one question. As the mural is being uh, applied to uh, the building, are there any activities planned with the neighborhood uh, so that they are part of this whole activity as it is installed? We have, uh, we're still scrambling a little bit for uh, unveiling this probably as it's being installed. I talked to Ebony about that a little bit with this one being so high up, it's kind of a little bit more dangerous to have the neighborhood around. Uh, but having said that, we're doing a whole kind of grand opening, um, like, you know, food truck invitational party for three days a week at the beginning of October after Evan, Ebony's done to kind of unveil a lot of the work and the life and some of the programs that are happening. So it's connected that way right now. And just COVID has made some of the other things a little bit more tenuous for us at this time too that are in person but we intend to make that uh, neighborhood invitational the first uh, three days monday tuesday and wednesday the first full week of october where people will come and be able to see it and hopefully meet ebony and, and all of that and, and then hear about some of the programs we're doing in our art room um, as we're able to again thank you <laughs> sorry My apologies. <laughs> um, any further questions from commissioners? I would uh, move to recommend. I have a motion to recommend from Commissioner Seward. Is there a second? From Commissioner Bailey. And a second from Commissioner Bailey. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Mark, will you please conduct the roll call vote?
Mark, are you still Thank with you. us? Commissioner Loftus. Yes. Commissioner Hill. Yes. Commissioner Bailey. Yes. Commissioner Chambers. Yes. Commissioner Hassenbeck. Commissioner Seward. Yes. Commissioner Kovash. Yes. Commissioner Eichmann. Yes. Commissioner Salyer. Yes. Commissioner, the, Mr. Chair, the motion passes. Mark, I one point. Paul Sweeney, Commissioner Sweeney is with us, and I don't believe his name was called. Is that correct? That is correct. One moment, please. Did Commissioner Sweeney just arrive? He, he's been here for a minute. He has, okay. <laughs> yeah, he heard the entire presentation and Good. previously. Okay. I vote yes. Note it. All right, that's unanimous. <laughs> the motion carries um, and this item is recommended. Moving on to agenda item 3B, Arts Commission case number 2000029, the council. Mural by Eric, please help me. Tipiconic. Tipiconic, thank you. One East Sheridan Avenue for Exhibit C, Ward 7. Robbie, will you please introduce this item? Yes, Tom Ferris is here. He's our applicant um, who manages Exhibit C. And the owner of the property is William Payne with the Candy Factory Lofts. And this is in the Bricktown Urban Design Area. And this is probably going to look a little bit familiar to you. As, as Tom and I were working together on this, there were a couple of things um, that we noted. So this is the part that, that you will remember. This is the mural, the existing mural is located on the east side of the seven story brick building that used to be called the Bunty Candy Building. And now is the, the Candy Factory Lofts. And so this previous mural that the Arts Commission recommended on July 17, 2017 is called Ready for Battle. And the group did a national competition and um, commissioned this from Eric Tipiconic. And when originally approved, you can see on the right side of the framed panel there, it goes all the way to the window. And so going through Arts Commission and Bricktown Design Review and Permitting, it was approved for that length. And this is a little bit of an unusual case for those of you that are particularly um, careful about brick buildings that are unpainted because it, it was an unpainted building and it was allowed to be painted because of the interest that this mural would draw. And so now what we found though is if you can see my cursor, the artist Eric did not paint all the way. And so what we're coming back to you now is for the proposed mural where ex exhibit C would like to go ahead and have it painted all the way, but also introduce a new figure for balance. And so that is why they're coming back. If the Arts Commission recommends this, they will seek an administrative approval just to change the rendering that attaches to the already approved CA, and then the permit is already in place. So I'll be happy to answer any other questions that you may have. And then also Tom is on the call with us. So uh, Robbie, where would the, um, where would the uh, explanation uh, go? I see on the top image, it's next uh, to the right of the image itself. Um, right. Where will the art marker go in the future? It's going to go to the left. Um, so it's right uh, at, at uh, street level so people can, can easily see it. Do you see my cursor there? Yes, yes, I did. Thank you. And I apologize. I'm, I'm not following procedures um, for non-commissioners if you're presenting before the commission, could you please state your name and address for the record? I didn't, I neglected to do this on the previous agenda item. Tom, please. Sure. 
Uh, my name is Tom Fanish Ferris, and I'm the manager of Exhibit C Native Gallery and Gifts. We're located at One East Sheridan in Bricktown. Thank you, Tom. My pleasure. Uh, we're really hopeful that this is, uh, gets approval. Um, Eric just stopped at the natural line uh, before um, in the previous iteration of the mural and had an idea to add the female figure, which we think is important to bring that balance and also equal representation um, of the, you know, maintaining professional, um, uh, I'm sorry, a traditional culture within a professional setting. And of course, men and women both do that. So we think it's a, an excellent addition and we hope that uh, everyone agrees. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, Commissioner Hill. I'd like to move approval with a comment. Um, Eric's actually the younger brother of my college roommate, so. Oh, wow. <laughs> nice. So I have a motion to recommend from Commissioner Hill. Is Commissioner there a second? Salyer would second. And a second from Commissioner Salyer. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Mark, will you please conduct the roll call vote? Brian, I'm sorry, I had I have a question. Please. Um, this is to, um, I'm sorry, Tom, I think. Have you thought about people taking pictures in the space and the landscaping? No, so um, the picture doesn't show up very well because they do. It is a huge social media spot for us. There's actually a ramp. That, that's the natural um, ramp entrance to our building that runs alongside that is in between the, the hedges and the building itself. So there's a solid three feet of space that is completely caved all the way up to our building um, that people can use. Great. I can see a real draw for people taking pictures on that one. It has been so far, and I think this is just going to help it. Thank you. My pleasure. And if there are no further questions, Mark, will you please conduct the roll call vote? Commissioner Loftus. Yes. Commissioner Hill. Yes. Commissioner Bailey. Yes. Commissioner Sweeney. Yes. Commissioner Chambers. Yes. Commissioner Hassenbeck. Commissioner Stewart. Yes. Commissioner Kovash. Yes. Commissioner Eichmann. Yes. Commissioner Salyer. Yes. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. Commissioner, the motion passes. Thank you, Mark. The motion to recommend carries. Moving on to agenda item 3C. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Commissioner Loftus. A, a point of order. Is Mr. Hassenbeck in attendance? No. So should we seek his vote on every roll call vote? Mark, please make a note. Thank you both. Note it. And that reminds me, I need to restate a, um, a, a message. And that is, this is a reminder that we, if we lose our connection, if for this meeting for more than 15 minutes, we will resume at our next regularly scheduled Arts Commission meeting on September 21st at 4 p.m. Now moving on to agenda item 3C, Arts Commission case number 2000032, Frenzy, Chainsaw Sculpture by Tom Zimmer, 1% for art for Edwards Park, 2917 Northeast 14th Street in Ward 7. Randy, will you please introduce this item? Thank you, Commissioner Chambers. And good afternoon, Commissioners. This is Randy Marks, Public Art Project Manager. Edwards Park, which you, <clears throat> excuse me, see illustrated here is a much loved and much used park on Grand Boulevard, just east of I-35. Uh, the lake that you see was added to the park in the early 2000s. It was a special, uh, a very, very special to the heart of former councilwoman uh, Willa Johnson. And uh, the, the uh, lake was completed and opened to the public in 2007. And you can see the red circle there um, denoting the location for uh, the project that we'll be talking about. 
the, you see that there's a walking path that was added recently, fairly recently around the lake. It's highly used and this artwork will be just off of that path on a concrete path. Rob, if you'll advance to the second slide. This is um, a chainsaw carving by Tom Zimmer that was installed, you may, will remember last year in Deniston Park. In this particular location in Edwards Park seemed to cry out for maybe something along these lines. Uh, this particular sculpture by artist Tom Zimmer is really uh, a crowd pleaser over in Deniston. And uh, we talked with the Parks Department and they uh, decided that something perhaps similar to this would be very appropriate for Edwards Park. Uh, so let's go on to slide number three. Parks provided a couple of uh, very large ash logs. These are, uh, these logs are about three feet in diameter by nine feet in length. The log in the back is actually going to be used by Don Narcomy for the project that you uh, recommended last month for Lake Draper Trail. The large log in the front is the one that will be used on this particular project. And we can go on to the next slide. Here we see a um, photo taken at the mandatory site tour. On the left is Chris Lucas with the Parks Department, artist Tom Zimmer, Commissioner Chambers, and then Lawrence Knapp, who's a member of the pre-qualified pool and uh, was serving as a stakeholder on this uh, particular committee. And I wanna back up and say that uh, Edwards Park is immediately adjacent to Edwards Heights neighborhood where um, Lawrence Knapp's father grew up and where his grandmother lived. And there was some really interesting information that Lawrence provided to the committee about the origin of the neighborhood. So immediately post-World War II, a couple of visionaries, Francis and Walter Edwards, decided that they wanted to develop an area of housing specifically for Oklahoma City's Black community to provide decent and reasonably priced housing. So that's the origin of this particular neighborhood and then the park was built adjacent to it. So at the um, uh, selection uh, committee, the selection uh, considered all of the, um, the respondents to the RFQ. Tom Zimmer was recommended. He attended the mandatory site tour and then um, presented a proposal, which we can see in the next location. I mean, the next slide. So Tom typically, this is very typical of the way that uh, Tom works. He'll do a conceptual design, uh, kind of a, a rough conceptual design, and then he works with the wood, with his chainsaw, seeing what the wood actually has to say to him as he works out the design. This is the, the uh, way that he worked on the Deniston Park, the Ferry's Treehouse uh, sculpture, which we, we in the neighborhood were very happy with. And this is the same approach that he'll be using here. So this um, is, you can see a horizontal design and not a vertical design. So when we got to the site tour, the vir virtually the first words out of Tom's mouth were, well, I think that a bench would be appropriate here. He presented to, to the committee uh, a couple of bench designs and a couple of vertical designs and the committee unanimous, unanim, unanimously chose this particular bench design titled Frenzy and uh, we present it to you for your recommendation. Any questions? Randy, could you help me with that um, image there? I'm not, I, I, I'm not getting it in terms of what the bench is. Where's somebody going to sit on it? I don't, I don't understand that part. Okay, so Robbie, look at the top illustration first. So that is the back, the back that will be facing to the interior of the park. So it'll be highly carved. Um, so this will be kind of a relief carving, and then it will have enough stain and potentially paint on it to cause the, uh, to create even more of a three-dimensional effect. And then the lower illustration, uh, this, we don't know exactly how Tom is going to, to uh, approach this. So what you see, what you see that Robbie is indicating right there, he may insert 
a piece of cedar to create the bench or he, to, excuse me, to create the seating area, or he may carve it entirely out of the ash log. So we won't really know that until he starts working. So but what am I looking at in the bottom one then? I, I, I really don't understand what I'm looking at. Okay, uh, Robbie, put the cursor on the uh, kind of, go, go up a little bit, put the cursor on the rectangular area. The, the uh, seat bench part? Yes, right there. that would be, uh, Stefan, that would be, excuse me, Commissioner Kovacs, that would be a, uh, a piece of cedar that may be in, in, inserted into the ash log to create the bench part. Right. Does that makes sense. Okay, so there's a large plank that with uh, waves and fish on it, and then the little the little bit in the middle is where the bench part will be. Well, uh, so the if what's, we look what's at, above what's above the plank are those? Is that supposed to be water? Uh, those are yes, it's just design indicating water. So he didn't. And that's want to have, that's the back, and that would be the where you would rest your back if you were exactly. sitting. Okay. I didn't yeah. want that to be highly carved because it would be uncomfortable to lean against. Okay, I understand. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Any other questions for Randy? And I don't believe Tom is with us today. Is that correct? Tom is not uh, not with us. He's working out of town today. Any additional questions from commissioners? Hearing none, I'll, um, if anybody else would like to speak for or against this item. I would, Anton Morton, 1611 Northwest 16th Street, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. I have working experience with Tom and Wendy Zimmer some years ago. Um, Eric Tipiconic as well, very pleased you passed that. But yeah, I've worked with Tom and Wendy. He's not here today. This guy kind of has to shoot from the cuff. Um, as someone with Woodwright and Carpenter experience myself, we've enjoyed good conversations. He really has to work with the wood, thus the kind of rough depiction. His work is exceptional for the media. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Anton. Any others? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion and a second. I'll move to recommend the project. project. Second. I have a motion to recommend uh, from Commissioner Eichmann and a second from Commissioner Kovash. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Mark, will you please conduct the roll call vote? Commissioner Loftus. Yes. Commissioner Hill. Commissioner Hill is not yes. here. Yes. Yes, there we go. Commissioner Bailey. Yes. Commissioner Sweeney. Yes. Commissioner Chambers. Yes. Commissioner Hassenbeck. Not here. <laughs> not here. <laughs> not present. <laughs> Commissioner Seward. Yes. Commissioner Kovash. Kovash, yes. Commissioner Kovash, thank you, sir. Commissioner Eichmann. Yes. Commissioner Salyer. Yes. Mr. Chair, the motion carries. Thank you, Mark. The motion to recommend carries. Now moving on to agenda item 3D, Arts Commission case 2000033, Funky Floral Flows 1 and 2, murals by Brooke Rollins and Dylan Bradway, 1% for art at two sites. The first item, 1 at Chilling Skate Park, address 539 Southeast 25th Street in Ward 7, and 2 
at Stars and Stripes Skate Park, 7620 North Portland Avenue in Ward 1. Robbie, will you please introduce this item? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Uh, so this is, uh, this project was selected from the pre-qualified artist pool. And what the original plan was, was to select one artist or artist team and ask that artist or team to make several designs, to pay for a concept for several designs that the selection committees could select from. But those that were interested from the pool were so exciting that the selection committee could not pick only one team. So there were two teams selected. And um, the team of Brooke Rowlands and Dylan Bradway were the team. So those of you that might not be skateboarders, I know I wasn't, and um, but feel like I've learned a lot. Schilling Park is the smaller of the two skate parks. It's probably a little bit more of a beginner park because of its size and the way that it's constructed. And you can see it here right next to the Schilling Recreation Center. And then here is the Schilling Skate Park immediately after. Robbie, I apologize. The screen right now is um, PrimeGov and not your presentation. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, how's that? Better, that, yay. Yay. There was one more button I needed to push. Sorry about that. I'm going to go back a little bit. So here's the smaller, the location for the smaller skate park, Schilling, right next to the recreation center. And then this right here is Southeast 25th. And then we'll go on. So this, this image is right after construction. So it's not even cleaned up yet and accepted by the city. But I wanted you to see some of the contours and um, some of the places where the, the skateboarders can grind their boards, things like that, because this is significant. Um, and then here's the design that Brooke and Roland did for this skate park. I want to back up a little bit here. One of the things that was the problem that the Parks Department wanted the selected artists to solve was that there is a lot of graffiti vandalism that happens at these parks probably more so at Schilling than Stars and Stripes because Schilling doesn't have as much use. So they both wanted to have a design that was exciting enough that it didn't look like a, a place where you'd want to put graffiti on it, but also something that would help attract users. And so that's why uh, our artist team did this design. And you can even see at the mandatory site tour, we talked a lot about not allowing for areas that were large canvases for this graffiti to happen. So they even had that in mind. They did some drawing like imagery here. And, and during the competition too, it was almost like, and the artists might want to talk about this more in a minute. It was almost like if that did get some graffiti vandalism, maybe it would be okay, you know, to a point. So, uh, and then here is, is that small pad in, that you saw originally. And you can see here some of the ramps. And then we'll move on to Stars and Stripes. Um, here is the site for Stars and Stripes, pre-construction. And I wanted to show you, that for those of you that have maybe never seen it, I wanted you to be able to see it. Um, oh, and I can't show you. Well, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I had a little video uploaded, but it's not going to let you see it. If it they, did play, what was the content of the video, Robbie? It was actually seeing the skate park pre-design, pre-conceptual design, but with skateboarders using it, I wanted you to kind of see them flying through the park and jumping. But unfortunately, um, that link was not going to work. And it came up somewhere. So here I've got a couple of different images that show, and you can see at least the artist used um, one photo with a skateboarder. And they chose to keep all of their designs in places that wouldn't conflict with the surface that the skateboarders would use. They also chose intentionally not to repaint these areas. Those areas are painted intentionally like for grinding of the boards and they also have a lot of wax on them. So if you chose to, you'd have to clean them up, take the wax off and you might have to re-wax them. And this is a very small budget project. For both parks, um, the artist will be paid a commission amount of 
So they did a lot with a little bit of money. And then here's another feature of the park. And so both of our artists are here too. Um, this one, uh, because this is in a park and they're not in design review areas, these are just, this is just recommendation to city council that staff pursue contracting that it will present back to council and also that the visual arts rights waivers be included in that contract is what we're asking for the recommendation from the arts commission. And do commissioners have any questions? If no questions from commissioners, I know that Brooke and Dylan are with us. Is there anything that you would like to add to this application? Uh, we'd just like to say uh, we really appreciate the opportunity and um, I just wanted to make something that was lively and that would flow through the park and add some uh, movement and a little bit more uh, fun to the space. Thank you, Dylan. Brooke? Oh, likewise. I mean, we're just honored to have the opportunity to um, also try to deter vandalism and everything and have it a more positive space to bring the community to. Thank you. And finally, your addresses, please. <laughs> uh, Brooke Rollins, 2400 Northwest 30th Street, Oklahoma City. Dylan Bradway, 2425 Northwest 16th, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Thank you both. Okay. Any other questions from commissioners for the, the artist or staff? Hearing I'd like to make a motion to recommend. And, and then I just want to clarify um, for Commissioner Hill and Seward that that includes the staff recommendation for the VERA waiver with the contract, correct? Yes. Yeah. I have a motion from Commissioner Seward and a second from Commissioner Hill. Any further discussion? Is that, excuse me, Chair, is, Please, that, is that a motion for item one? For both, uh, for both, uh, Rita. Because they need to be taken separately is why I asked. Ah, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Rita. Um, so under consideration now is agenda item 3D1. This is a shilling park. And uh, if it's, that's okay with you, John sure. and Steve, yeah. um, I have a motion and a second from them. Any further discussion on agenda item D1? Hearing none, Mark, please conduct the roll call vote. Commissioner Loftus. It's an old skateboarder. I vote yes. <laughs> Commissioner Hill. Yes. Commissioner Bailey. Yes. Commissioner Sweeney. Yes. Commissioner Chambers. Yes. Commissioner Seward. Yes. Commissioner Kobash. Kovash, as someone who's never skateboarded, I vote yes. Thank you. Commissioner Eichmann. Yes. Commissioner Salyer. Yes, and Commissioner Loftus, that explains a lot to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was the key word? <laughs> Mr. Chair, the motion carries. Thank you, Mark. The motion to recommend carries. Now moving on to agenda item D2, um, this time at Stars and Stripes Park. Do I hear a motion? So move, Commissioner Bailey. I have a motion. Second, Commissioner Salyer. Thank you. Commissioner <laughs> Bailey made the motion and Commissioner Salyer seconded it. And just for clarification, this includes the staff recommendations for the Vera waiver with the contract. Yes, Any further discussion? Hearing none, Mark, will you please conduct the roll call vote? Commissioner Loftus. Yes. Commissioner Hill. Yes. Commissioner Bailey. Yes. Commissioner Sweeney. Yes. Commissioner Chambers. Yes. Commissioner Seward. Yes. Commissioner Kovesh. Yes. <laughs> Commissioner Eichmann. Yes. Commissioner Salyer. Yes. Mr. Chair, the motion passes. Thank you, Mark. Again, that's agenda item D2, and it's the motion to recommend has carried. Moving on to agenda item 3E, Arts Commission case number 200034. 
000034, I believe. Deep Roots, sculpture by Morgan Robinson for Mesta Park Stage, address 1900 North Chartel Avenue, Mesta Park neighborhood, and this is in Ward 6. Robbie, will you please introduce this item? Yes, so this is in Mesta Park, and at the southeast corner you can see here is the round stage and the audience portion and one of the entries to the stage. And so Melinda Irwin, resident of Mesta Park, had a desire to honor her mother, Anita Alice Irwin, and she made a sizable donation to make a public art investment in the park. So when she and um, a, another volunteer, J.B. Shuline, who's also on this call, um, when I first met them at the site, we were talking about a lot of different options. This is another technical assistance project with the Office of Arts and Cultural Affairs. And then understanding what they wanted to do and, and looking at the site itself and knowing it was a historic preservation neighborhood. Um, and, and also hearing about the types of events that happen here. You know, this is a stage where the neighborhood typically does celebrations. They have music performances small weddings could take place. It became apparent that it might be visually interesting to try to do something that was almost like a gateway from one side, but also a backdrop from the audience side. And so we started looking at that and their budget. And you can see here, here's what the audience would see. And you can see that on both sides, there could be something interesting added as a backdrop. And that way, when photos were taken of events that happened or any kind of social media posts too, everybody would know. You wouldn't even have to put where it was because it would be recognizable. And so we started working with that idea and also with the idea that we wanted this to really be meaningful and to tie back into Alice, uh, Anita Alice Irwin's life. And so we, we, uh, we had a competition uh, with the, the pre-qualified pool artists in the three-dimensional category and the group, the neighborhood group. And we have some other uh, representatives too with us on the call today, uh, Sue Ann Sullivan and Ann Zekritz. And they wanted to um, look at the different, they chose three different finalist teams and individual artists. And Morgan Robinson was the was the proposed project that they liked the most. And so here is Deep Roots, his sculpture proposed for the site. I've got a couple of different images for you. And here's what you can see as an audience member. There is also ample lighting at this site. So the idea would be at night that this portion would be lit, the overhead portion. And also the one thing that we really wanted to see with the artwork is that if you were walking around this edge of the park, that you could actually see who was on the other side of the artwork for safety. So you would, you know, you would feel very safe. Um, the other thing is this is the, probably the lowest light location in the park. So presenting light as part of the artwork was also quite helpful. And then here are the dimensions. And so with that, if you have any more questions of me, and then we also have the committee and the artist Morgan Robinson here to answer you. Thank you, Robbie. Um, Morgan, would you like to share anything about your creation? Morgan, is there anything you would like to add? Hi there. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. yes. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. No, I, I'd just like to share my excitement um, for this this opportunity, I, I love Mesta Park personally. I have uh, friends and family members actually that live in the park and uh, enjoy what Mesta Park brings and experience kind of that lacking element in that radius uh, and to have an opportunity to design something and create something that could add to that uh, historic and beautiful community. It, it's very exciting to, to contribute there. So I'm thrilled. Uh, to, and honored to, to be a part of that. Thank you, Morgan. And for the record, could you please state your address? Yeah, this is my studio, uh, 916 South Lewis, L-E-W-I-S Street in Stillwater, Oklahoma. 
Thank you, sir. And then also joining us are community members, JV, Sue, and um, Melinda. Uh, I, any of you, would you like to speak to this application? Uh, this is Sue Moss Sullivan. Um, I was thrilled to be invited by JB to be on the selection committee. The reason I was drawn to this is though, is it's majestic, it's abstract. So anybody walking by it can, and sitting there can make what they want of it. And um, I've lived in Mesta Park when it was the comeback neighborhood. <laughs> we didn't even have the official name. So I'm thrilled. Um, to see this happening and so I can go sit and enjoy it. Thanks. Thank you, Sue. And before muting, would you state your address, please? Yes, 915 Northwest 17th Street, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Thank you, Sue. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. JB, anything you would like to add? There we go. Hey, yes, thank you so much. Thanks. To, it was a pleasure to work with Robbie. We appreciate you so very much. And uh, we appreciate being able to present to this uh, very esteemed uh, commission. Thank you, JB. And then also your address, please. Oh, yes. 404 and one half Northwest 22nd. Thank you. And I don't believe Anne's with us, but Melinda, is there anything you would like to add? Um, not, not really, but I am super excited about this. I think it'll be a, a great addition to the park. And I haven't lived in the neighborhood quite as long as Sue, but I bought my first house in Mesta Park in 1992. So the park is somewhere I go almost every day and I'm really looking forward to this sculpture and enhancement of Mesta Park. Thank you, my, my address is 405 Northwest 16th Street. Thank you. Uh -huh. Commissioners, any questions for staff, artists, or the community members? Commissioner Seward. I assume this is constructed of steel that is uh, allowed to rest. Yes. Morgan, do you want to talk more about that? But yes, Commissioner. There we go. Hi. Um, yes, it, you're right, John. This is court uh, designed with core 10 steel, quarter inch rolled core 10 steel um, that, that'll have a nice patina to go with all the greenery there in the park. Thank you. Uh, what about engineering? As, as far as stamping for approval for structural engineering? Yes. Yes, I'm, I'll have shop drawings. Uh, I'm having shop drawings work in the process of getting those prepared currently. And uh, the Robbie and, and her, her group, uh, so they, they might have some help with uh, looking over the shop drawings for stamp uh, for engineering stamp before installation. Very yes. good. Thank you. Yes, the packet contains um, Morgan's um, fully line item budget, and um, he had dollars allocated to the structural engineer. Thank you. Chairman, might I add something to this as well? Please. I just realized something I left off. So one of the things um, that as you're considering this that would need to be part of a motion if you'd like to recommend it as the Arts Commission is that in work this, you know, this is happening on Parks Department property. So it's public owned property and the neighborhood will, will retain ownership of the sculpture itself and also retain the maintenance responsibility and the removal responsibility. So as you're considering this, the process that is recommended is that, um, that the conditions would be that this would first go to the Parks Commission. Um, the Parks uh, Department requested that. So, and anytime there's a change in use, even though this isn't really a change in use, I think the Parks Director wanted it to go to the Parks Commission more for a celebration point and to applaud the neighborhood and the artist for such a great project. And that's why he would like that. Also, this will have to go before the Historic Preservation Commission. We've already introduced it to the staff that works on that, but they'll have to formally review it. And then the, the final step um, uh, to get city approval will be a public art installation and maintenance agreement that will have to be approved by city council. And when that is sent, 
that will contain provisions for assigned visual arts rights act waiver um, a review of details of the structure like commissioner seward was asking about public works would have to sign off on those and then also an administrative revocable which would be the artist notice to proceed so all of those steps will be what happens after a recommendation by the arts commission Thank you, Robbie. Commissioner Chambers, uh, I have a, a, a question about uh, the sign up at the top, the sphere. Is that um, solid or is that cut? Uh, what I'm tr trying to figure, okay, there we go. I miss, okay. I was just trying to understand what the audience, because that becomes the backdrop for any performer that's on the stage area and what I was curious as to what it was they were going to see. So they just see the reverse of that. So there'll be two different cutouts. That way you okay. won't see a, a, a back of the Mesta Park. It won't be it won't be in reverse. You'll see two fronts essentially okay. on each side of the sign. And it'll be lit, backlit behind each side. Thank you. Missed that. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Eichmann. Any additional questions for the applicants, artists, or staff? No question, uh, Chairman, but if I could just say it, make a quick comment. Melinda, I'm so happy to see this. This is really a beautiful gift in honor of your mom and uh, it's gonna enhance the park so much. It's lovely. Thank you, Meg. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Salyer. Brian, this is Stefan. I also am very excited. I'm a, a, a Master Park resident and I'm also very familiar with Morgan's work, so I'm excited to see this go in. Thank Mr. You. Chairman. Yes, Commissioner Loftus. Uh, I'd like to point out that way back in the 70s, the architecture firm of Loftus, Bell Downing and Partners designed this park. And this particular plaza, we didn't have any money to do anything nice like this. And this is really exciting to me. I do remember that tree that now has been petrified and uh, I think the overall project is fabulous and I wanna make a motion to approve this. I have a motion to recommend from Commissioner Loftus and Commissioner Loftus, I'm assuming that's with the staff recommendations, the list that she included earlier, correct? Yes, sir. Commissioner Salyer will second. And a second from Commissioner Salyer. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Mark, will you please conduct the roll call vote? Commissioner Loftus. Yes, sir. Commissioner Hill. Yes. Commissioner Bailey. Yes. Commissioner Sweeney. Yes. Commissioner Chambers. Yes. Commissioner Seward. Yes. Commissioner Kovash. <laughs> yes. Commissioner Eichmann. Yes. Commissioner Salyer. Yes. Mr. Chair, the motion carries. The motion to recommend carries. Thank you, Mark. Now moving on to agenda item four. Discussion action on reports from committees. 4A, commission advocate. I believe there's nothing to report today. Is that correct, Robbie? That's correct. Uh, Commissioner Yosef did call, but there was, when we discussed it, there was nothing to report. Yeah. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item 4B, integrated 1% for arts projects. Uh, the committee has informed me that they plan to meet in the next 30 days, which means we're moving on to agenda item 5, report from staff. Um, 5A project report, Robbie, um, please introduce it. Yes, so you have your updated monthly project report on last month's activities. This is the same report that we provide to the department director in planning and also the city manager's office. So as you review that, please let us know if you have any questions. And then I'm gonna turn it over to Randy because we've worked on our next year's uh, project, uh, what our work plan will be. And he wants to talk a little bit about that. So I'm gonna share my screen again. There you go. Can everybody see that? Okay. Hello again, commissioners. When we began to formulate, when Robbie and I began to formulate the current work plan, we thought it would be a good idea to see what the 
distribution of projects was in the various wards. And uh, it was very informative. So we found out, for example, that uh, Ward 7 had 11 active projects in it. And uh, a lot of projects are concentrated in Ward 6, 4, and 7, where um, Ward 1 was a little, uh, excuse me, Ward 8 was a little bit light. And Ward 1, 2, and 3 were also a little bit light. So this informed us uh, in our decision making to go ahead and advance some of the projects in those wards. So what you're looking at here, are the, the red stars indicate projects that are currently underway. They're either in planning, they're in contracting or construction. The green stars indicate projects that are just recently finished. So these are ones that, that were finalized just in the last two months. The light blue stars are ones that are in legal review right now. So we're waiting to find out if we can go ahead and advance those. This is an extension of the poetry project that you have already approved. And we're wanting to add three more parks. And the bond attorneys are uh, discussing this right now. And hopefully they will allow us to move ahead on that. And then the purple stars are projects that we're going to introduce into this year's work plan and we're looking forward to launching. So you'll see reports on those before uh, too awful long. So uh, anyway, this is, this is uh, the projects that, that all of you are responsible for, and we're happy to uh, see all of those stars all over the map. Thank you, Randy. Seeing all of that information visualized uh, is exciting. <laughs> uh, seeing it spread out across awards, one, a lot of work, two, it's, it's fantastic seeing the distribution of of art throughout our city. Any questions from commissioners? Thank you again, Randy and Robbie. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item six, comments from commission members, 6A, items from chair, no report. 6B, items from commission members. Any commissioners wish to report? Hearing none, moving on to agenda item seven, comments from citizens. Are there any citizens who wish to report to the commission or share? Anton Morton here, address as previously mentioned. I just wanted to say, you guys approved some fantastic projects today. I have a lot of experience with Morgan, Brooke and Dylan, excited for everybody. But I wanted to add to that, you know, eventually people will stop thinking about doing these online meetings. I have loved the access, the ability to sit in and see what's happening, see what's coming up in the future. I hope that you all consider ways to continue this whenever they get to that conversation. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Other citizens? Hearing none, and there being no other, no further business, this meeting is adjourned, and our next meeting is on Monday, September 21st. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.